and take time if you can see the chat and respond. I know not everyone can have can access that depending on how you're joining us. Um, but it's great to see what people are sharing um, from having great internship experiences to a successful year to make new friends to be in person the whole year to rebuild and recover safely. Um, our students are ready to engage in real world learning and their internships. These are just great. Hoping that we can stay in the building all year. Um, I hope our daughter feels a sense of awesome BPS offers. Hoping students can better connect. I see a lot of common themes that are coming up for our families of our hopes for the year. Which are love. got great attendance tonight which is lovely i so miss being here with all of you in person and welcoming you to our campus on the beautiful fall evening that it is um, but hopefully this is our last year of doing a virtual curriculum night and we can regroup as a community together in person next fall at this time and that there'll be other opportunities throughout the year that we can have families on campus um, so thank you for adding into our chat and sharing who you are and who your children are and hopes that you have for this year. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my um, slide deck in just a second um, because I would love everyone if you want to and are brave to turn on your camera. Um, you can turn on your mics if you want. I just want to say hello and good evening to everyone and see our community together so i'm going to try that Let's see um, if we can all kind of see each other i got a lot of things coming up on my screen right now in the lobby and if you have the teams app and you click the little three dots and go large gallery that'll give you a space for more than nine videos so that's so cool and maybe i'll share my screen oh that's not happening that didn't work <laughs> i knew that well but i tried oh it's so great to see everyone again if you want to say hi and turn your mics off or do a wave i see some kiddos too so fun to see you all and a dog Juliet's got a dog with her oh goodness hi everyone happy Hello. Tuesday evening is Devin he's outside <laughs> it's fun to see where you all are oh well welcome 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 we are thrilled to have you all with us this evening and we are going to get started so back to the show um hopefully here in just a second sound on zoom okay i still have the lobby thing that keeps popping up um so tonight, Matt and I are just going to do a quick intro. Uh, Jamie and Melinda, our two counselors, are going to talk a little bit about um, what's coming up in our counseling department and ways for parents and families to support our students. Tony, who is our new internship coordinator, is going to share what's up in the world of high school internships. Suzanne, who is our new ITCL, though not new to Big Picture, as my co-founder 10 years ago, and um, we'll talk about a variety of technology applications and supports for families to have with their students. I have Martin and Karen in the house, our co-PTSA presidents, who are going to talk about the fabulous big picture PTSA. Um, and then we'll send you off to watch the really cool, uh, sometimes humorous flip grid videos that our teachers have prepared for you this evening. So 
let's jump in. I'll first start with a land acknowledgement um, to show gratitude to the Duwamish tribe and the first people of Seattle and Bellevue area, the land that we are living and working on today. We are grateful in the sustenance and beauty this land provides in the honor of the rich history and the present day lives of the Duwamish people. What? So what again, if everyone could mute themselves. You want to make the meatballs, I, right? I, I hear some families talking about family dinner, which is super fun. Um, just remember to hit mute. Um, thank you so much for that. Uh, so big picture, uh, we are just super excited that we are growing as an organization each and every day um, as the second big picture school in the state of Washington. Um, now there are close, I think, to 10 that are here in the state, um, really trying to make some radical movement about what education looks like um, and real world learning looks like here in Washington. Um, there are now big picture schools in 28 states and 12 countries um, with well over 150 total schools around the world serving uh, tens of thousands of students. Um, so we're just thrilled as a network to continue to expand um, and to have our influence around the world and to be able to learn from and with each other. Um, I was on a call a few weeks ago with the director of the Australian Big Picture Schools. Um, we had the director of the Kenyan schools, the Israel schools, Ireland schools, and all the West Coast schools talking about a potential pilot that we wanted to do with each other. So it's just great to have a community of practitioners around the big picture learning uh, network uh, worldwide. And we'll continue to partner with them and uh, share their work um, and our collective work out with everyone. Here at the school level, uh, we have our focus this year on social emotional health and well-being um, for all of our students and staff as we re-enter re into the school. We have our focus on PBL and big picture learning distinguishers, so really getting back to the core of our work on student agency and student empowerment and connections to our community, um, our internship work, our advisory, and our project-based experiences. And many of those shifted during the pandemic when we were um, learning mostly remotely and we did the best that we could to to move through that. But now that we are back in the building um, and reentering this next phase uh, of our schooling, um, we want to return and continue to improve and refine those core components. And a lot of that will be um, a lot of work this year around centering um, our work on the voices from families and students. So we're going to be continuing to reach out to engage all of our stakeholder groups, primarily students and families, um, as we revision our school and want to make some long term changes and some short term changes now that we're a decade into um, having a big picture school here in Bellevue. So look for those opportunities to continue to engage with us um, and to be part of um, evolving us um, in our future direction. And lastly, part of that health and well-being really is around our COVID mitigating measures. Um, we are following the nine required mitigating measures um, as recommended by the King County Department of Health, um, focused on our cleaning and disinfecting routines, uh, face coverings, hand hygiene, physical distancing inside the classroom um, and outside, uh, how we're responding to cases or suspected cases, um, continuing to support um, students and staff, if they're sick and with any of the COVID-like symptoms following um, our direction and what that means to um, have students and, and staff um, uh, be tested if they're sick. Um, we hope in the next few weeks, I think the communication went out to families to implement diagnostic um, and surveillance testing here on campus. Um, I think that's really exciting to be able to offer that right here so families don't need uh, to go elsewhere um, to have any of those tests if needed. Uh, so we'll be rolling that out in the next few weeks. Um, hopefully at some point this fall, our students under 12 will be eligible for vaccinations and we'll continue to support and encourage vaccination for everybody um, and to monitor um, 
you know, our ventilation system and, and all of that. So it is this kind of Swiss cheese layer. We've seen this visual a lot that's come out from the Department of Health. It's the layers of mitigation all working together um, to support the health and safety of our building. Um, and so far, there's been no school-based transmission of COVID. Um, and we want to keep it that way and keep all of your children safe here. They're doing great. Um, for the most part, they are following the procedures. Um, they're enjoying the outside dining cafe. Um, canopies are on their way with hopefully by the end of the week as more rain sets in. So students who want to continue to stay outside um, and eat at lunch, um, bring a, a jacket and stay bundled up, um, but they will be able to stay dry. And outside there are indoor spots six feet apart for students as well. But so far so good with lunch. I know that was a big concern for a lot of people of what that would look like, um, but the kids have done great. Um, so we feel really fortunate about how things have rolled out this month um, and looking ahead. I feel good about that work too. And now I'm going to turn it over to my fabulous assistant principal, Matt. Thank you, Bethany. Away, Matt. Awesome. You can hear me okay. Wonderful. Um, but thanks all for being here. Um, incredible turnout here on a Tuesday afternoon. I'm Matt Stokes. Uh, I have the very best job in the world of getting to greet your wonderful students every morning. Uh, do my best to learn all 400 names here before uh, the start of October. And uh, I'm, I'm amongst all the unique challenges of of this year. Um, it's just such a privilege to see young people so excited about being back together. Um, and excited to share time and build community and join clubs and all the things that schools are designed to do. So it's just been an incredibly fun start to the year because of the students um, each day. So I, I started teaching math here many years ago um, and then stepped away for a few years to the other side of the country until Bethany and I had dinner in uh, Little Italy, uh, Manhattan. Um, and then a few weeks later said, what do you think about coming back? And uh, it's just been the two greatest jobs in the world to teach math um, and serve as the assistant principal here. So if you have any questions about things that uh, I have the privilege of introducing here over the next few minutes, please don't hesitate to reach out um, or anything in between. Do our best to be here for you every step of the way. So um, Bethany will guide through some slides here. And ultimately what I am going to talk about here is uh, Kind of what happens between classes so what are all those things that help build community and when i read through um, our opening prompt um, it's no surprise that community is coming up so often and whether it's community and connection or connecting in person or sense of community creating memories um, our our classes do such a good job of building community in in between those four walls and we also hope that the moments in between um, also have unforgettable memories and build relationships that just strengthen what it means to be a student, um, especially learning under the conditions that we're all in. And so one of the ways we do that is by way of our clubs um, and our teachers help facilitate student driven clubs, um, everything from art clubs to supporting the yearbook from math to middle school soar to anime to green team. Um, this is a dynamic list as clubs are student driven. Um, and so if there's something as a student or as um, a family that you would like to see here, um, there's a relatively simple process of joining together with a few friends um, and asking uh, a teacher or an adult here in the community to step in as that advisor and clubs will happen, you know, sometimes during lunch, sometimes after school. Another middle school activity that um, we have available are our sports um, and are under our Jubilee umbrella. So these are the four current sports happening right now um, from cross country to girls golf, boys and girls soccer. Uh, those are traveling um, programs uh, that compete amongst the other middle schools in the district with practices happening um, here at our Robinswood North and South field. So those are kind of our, our middle school extracurricular activities. Um, our current list of high school clubs is on the next slide. Again, these are also changing. You'll see that some of the clubs span six through 12, um, so it creates a pretty equal opportunity for middle school and high schools to work together, um, whether that's through art or yearbook. And then some are specific just to high school students um, like SOAR, uh, currently financial literacy. So again, 
there are some really cool opportunities that are already in existence for students to connect in spaces and places uh, outside of their classrooms. And then again, if there are things that your student or if you're a student on this call are interested in, um, Taylor Philpa is our ASB advisor. I'm happy to help facilitate a conversation about how to get that going. Um, I have heard a student interested in starting a piano club, um, and I know that we have a digital and uh, traditional piano, so um, always interested in helping facilitate awesome opportunities for students. So we think about student well-being. It often falls in under this acronym of SEL, social and emotional learning. Um, it's um, a uh, pretty broad concept at this point in terms of how we help young people not just think and learn and grow in our kind of academic silos, but how do we help them grow within their ability to relate to each other and with the challenges themselves. Um, so it is certainly our, our kind of mission um, and effort to help make sure every student feels safe, affirmed, and inspired to leave high levels of SEL and well-being, regardless of their background. Um, and we know that we're looking at school this year through the lens of kind of re-entry um, after many months of an educational programming experience that I don't think any of us ever envisioned as uh, teachers, um, school leaders, parents, and students. And so we're doing our best from some of the more structured things like Camp Big Picture in the beginning of the year, whether it's um, uh, structures across the clubs and Jubilee spaces, um, as well as our efforts across the entire school um, to help make sure that sense of belonging um, exists across the school day. Um, and so the next slide just captures some of kind of the overarching um, events that help make this possible. Um, some of those things show up in our advisory curriculum, like our Who Am I project, um, as well as our student-led conferences to help students really feel like this is a place place that's built for them um, and by them and with them. Um, our PBIS team works to look at the entire school, 6 through 12, and determine what themes are coming up. Um, what are different experiences we need to build for all students? What do we need to respond to um, as, as individual teachers, as part of a collective community? Um, and then our school-wide activities um, include our PMU assemblies that happen this morning for our middle school students. Um, happen monthly for high school students, um, as well as our ASB events. We had um, a gingerbread house making contest. We've had talent shows and we've included promotional ceremonies. Um, we also have morning announcements um, and connecting all of these pieces, both in virtual and um, in-person ways has been um, just an incredible challenge, but also immensely rewarding when we think about this ask of what it looks like to transition from being kind of independent learners online to um, a collective community again. And so it's a kind of an inhale and an exhale of how we help transition all of the pieces. I want to give a special shout out to our high school counselors who think day in and day out about how students are showing up emotionally, who help make sure that the experiences that students have um, that may be particularly challenging both at home or here at school has a safe place um, to go to to think through just the experience of being a human being um, and a learner and a classmate uh, older or little brother um, to get through this time in a way that reflects the just incredible capacity of the, the people that make up this community so we're always open to suggestions and ideas you know your children and you as students know yourselves. And so if there's things that you're excited about that don't yet exist or events that you would love to see help bring the community together, we want to partner with you um, and uh, we're here for you every step of the way. So Bethany, I think that's uh, from an SEL bit. Um, and I'm just, I think it's a privilege to introduce our middle school counselor, Jamie Ginter. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to um, be speaking with you. I'm going to agree with Bethany and say that it's um, a little bit odd to be back in my office at home. Um, I sat down and flipped the computer up and a um, little bit of emotional flashback of working from this room and um, just I'm, I'm in that emotional space going right to gratitude that we are on campus and then I get to see kids and talk with kids and be with them because it is really um, 
the best part of my job. Um, a student came in today. Can I just talk to a counselor? And um, I've tried to introduce myself many times and I brought him in and started talking with him and it was just so lovely to um, be there for him and answer a couple of questions and um, send him on his way back to class. So I just um, I'm, I'm really grateful to be on campus. Um, I've been at Big Picture a long time since the beginning and uh, working with the students is just such a joy to me from s small issues um, to larger issues that come up. I'm happy to talk about um, a wide range of things. I also love it when parents call me and say these things are happening at home and we're not really sure what to do next um, and talk about different ideas or strategizing. So please reach out to me anytime. Um, I'm, I'm here just to support all of our um, students and staff and families in any way that I can. I think the next slide has some um, logistics that as parents um, you can keep in mind. I have twin seventh grade children myself and um, wow has this last year been interesting. They are growing and changing in some lovely ways and um, also some puberty attitude. Um, I'm going to find my independence. Um, go ahead and leave the room mom ways and it was a bit shocking because for 12 years it was mom, 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 look at this, look at this and now it's like go away, go away and I was like what's happening here? Um, oh yeah, uh, thank goodness um, I'm in this field and it's developmentally very appropriate for them to be um, wanting some independence. Um, as the mom it's been sad and hard so uh, that's just real life with kids and I, I love learning from your kids at school. To go to the um, slide just to talk about a couple things. The logistics of course might need to change now that um, or if your kids are in middle school now, um, establishing a place for them to do work, getting back into the groove of things and then the emotional component of being back at school. Um, most of us, the adults I've talked to, we're exhausted getting back to life of commuting and being at work and standing in front of students is um, it's very different from remote quarantine life. So for our kids, it's different too and their emotions that come along with that of feeling a little bit tired or confused or overwhelmed are really normal and um, and it's absolutely normal to be sad and grieving what we've lost um, along with the optimism and hope that we have as things are improving um, as they are. So very complicated times, complicated to be humans. Reach out anytime. Um, again, I just love working with your students and um, I'm here for you. So I think I'm going to introduce Melinda Breeze next, the high school counselor, who I love working with every day. We have so much fun, great sense of humor. I'm just so glad to have her. Take it away, Melinda. Hey everyone, um, I swear to you I have the loudest, most exuberant family in the world and you may hear them in the background running around screaming, howling, who knows. Um, so just FYI, giving a heads up on that. Um, so really I've been a school counselor for a while. I'm so glad to do what I do. Um, Jamie said it's so great to be talking to students in person. And it is, and it's like every time I talk to a student in person, like my heart gets bigger and I'm like, oh, that's right. Like this is the greatest part. This is why we do this. Um, my goal is to help students in high school and then for after high school. And that's not like just planning in college. Those things are important and they're part of what I do. But also, what does it mean to be a human being after I graduate? How do I find my place in the world? Students are graduating statistically, knock on wood, hopefully. Um, a fifth of their lives with four fifths of their lives ahead of them, right? Um, and so let's prepare them to have an amazing uh, experience throughout their lives and one that is meaningful. Um, so I do that in lots of ways. Um, you all can read the slide, but basically um, just any interaction I can do with students individually. I love doing classroom lessons. It's one of my favorite, favorite things to do. Um, and so I will be in the classroom with your students this year. Um, and then yeah, working with all of you, working with all of the resources we have available um, to both get through the hard times and also celebrate because so many amazing things happen, specifically in high school in my world, also in middle school, but um, 
that we want to celebrate so many milestones, so many things we overcome, so many things we can be proud of and celebrate together. And so that's a huge part of what I want to do with everybody. Um, just always ask if your students need help, please encourage them to ask. If you have questions or need help, please ask. Um, I think it's kind of hard when we get into high school as families and parents to figure out like, okay, how much do I get involved? Right. And I would say still stay involved, um, still keep an eye out, um, do step back and let your students ask questions and ask for help first. And if things get hairy, step in and start paying like more attention and bugging them a little bit more and working with me and all the people here a big picture. Um, so I think I'll talk about the MHAT counselor next. So every time someone wants to join, the slide disappears for me. So I'm going to keep clicking as we go. OK, so MHAT is this program we have in the Bellevue School District. It's pretty incredible. Um, the way it works is that this November, there will be a lesson on um, how to support your friends and how to seek help yourself when there's thoughts of suicide or self-harm. After that lesson, there will be a screener where we will ask every 7th through 10th grader in the fall and then 11th graders in the spring, how are you doing and do you need support in this? And based on the responses of that screener, um, we have an MHAT counselor who will work full time at Big Picture with these students who um, show up as needing that extra mental health support um, and will do basically weekly counseling with them, as I understand it, um, for a period of time to get them that support. It's awesome if families want to opt out of the screener, they can and they'll talk about that, but it's a really amazing experience as we go through times where things get harder for youth in general. And then, I mean, I, you all have seen it. My children are two and five. They're OK. They don't know any better or any the difference when COVID and not COVID. But you all have seen the impact on your kids. And so we want to make sure that we're finding out any students that do need support and then getting them that support. And that's all I've got. Awesome. Thank you, Melinda. I appreciate it. You and Jamie are rock stars and we're so fortunate to have you. And the next rock star is Mr. Tony Granito, internship coordinator. Take it away, Tony. You're so so kind, Bethany. Um, yeah, hi everybody. I'm Tony Granito, and you might have known me in my previous role as the ITCL, um, and that is Suzanne, who's coming up after me. Uh, but now this year, I have moved into the uh, the LTI coordinator role after 10 years at our school. And uh, it's both exciting and um, it's exciting in a lot of ways. I'll just say that because we are coming back to not only coming back to the building, but we're coming back to um, internships in some of the ways that we had internships before before we went on lockdown a year and a half ago. Um, my uh, one of my counterparts is Bob Mercer, Barb Mercer, and uh, you will hear her name come out of your children's mouths once in a while because she does a lot of uh, working and talking with the kids about their internships. And um, the third person is um, is Hillary McDonald, who has joined our team this year to to do some of the same work, um, uh, but she's also going to specialize in reaching out to parents to. Um, find ways to support the internship program that uh, that we are working to rebuild this year. Um, so some of the things that we are trying to rebuild, um, we both we have both in person and virtual internships available this year. Um, and the probably the most important thing that I should say about in person uh, in person internships is that we have added the COVID health mitigation and safety standards to all of the safety checks that we do at the sites for approving sites. Um, that includes uh, making sure our students know all of the the precautions that happen at those sites, um, along with observing all of the things that we're doing at school that that Bethany mentioned earlier. Um, the other things that I'll mention um, about this slide are probably for more for middle school parents who have joined us. Um, uh, because many of the high school 
parents already know some of these things about internships. Internships last about 10 to 12 weeks, but if the but if the students have a really uh, really awesome internship, they can be extended. Um, we've had students who have done the same internship for the whole year, um, and we just want to make sure that they're learning throughout the internship. So that's why um, we 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 kind of limit it to 10 to 12 weeks, and then see how it's going after that. Um, they happen on Thursdays during school hours. Um, students uh, and parents need to arrange the transportation to get to and from the internships. Um, that can be either in cars or in metro, and we we talk about um, being safe on all of, in those places. Also, um, when students get to their internships, they develop a project that contributes to the workplace where okay. they are interning. Oh, that helps them learn, but also helps out where they're where they're um, doing their internship. Um, at the at at this time, uh, we are about four weeks into the ninth and tenth grade orientation for internship, and these are some of the things that we um, that we cover in the ninth and tenth grade uh, internship orientation, so that we can prepare. Our ninth and tenth graders. Normally, this is only ninth graders, but since we weren't in school last year, we uh, we, we included the tenth graders this year. Uh, so, in the six weeks, we go over the whole process. We talk about networking. Um, many of you might have um, gotten questions from your children over the past weeks about friends and neighbors and people uh, that the children can build their network through. Uh, we talk about communication skills. Um, Many of the students have already had informational interviews. We talk about searching for uh, possible places that match their interests that that will that could end up in an internship. Um, of course, we talk about the skills and teen labor law and their project development. This week, we are actually going through all of that paperwork um, with with the ninth and tenth graders because um, I think I should have mentioned this up front. We are currently um, even at this point in the year, uh, in the with with all of the things going on in our school and in our world, we have um, I believe I believe I have twelve students who have are, are making their way through the initial paperwork for internships already, and I believe I have another ten or eleven more who are on the verge of starting that. So already at this point in the year with what uh, you know with reopening school we are we are at 10 to 15 percent of our students who are making their way towards internships um, as we speak okay so um, this is my pitch to all of the parents out there uh, to um, to solicit your support in in helping our students, and sometimes and sometimes it might not be uh, your student; it might be friends of your child who um, who might need some some assistance finding an internship. So the internship process is like searching for a job, um, which many of us have done throughout our lives, and networking is really important in that process. Um, so. Like I mentioned earlier, friends, families, neighbors, work connections, social media, um, all of those, all of those avenues um, would be a great help um, if your child comes and asks you um, for ideas for possible internships. Um, the things that I mentioned earlier in the in the ninth grade, ninth and tenth grade orientation, if um, it would be great for you to ask your child uh, about phone calls they've made or emails they've sent or ask them what their elevator pitch is about themselves um, when they initially talk to possible mentors um, on informational interviews. Um, so those are some of the things that um, I'm asking our community to help our students out with. Um, I had more things on this slide uh, that I was going to mention about advisory, but um, thinking a little bit more uh, 
I, I mean, I don't know what happened to those things on those on this slide, but um, if you after we're done here, if you go and watch the high school advisors, they have done a fabulous job of explaining and and touching base, touching all the points that I was going to mention about advisory. Um, and the last thing I think that I will uh, say before I pass it on to Suzanne is uh, that we are. Um, in coming back to the building and coming back to internships this year, we are trying to improve and make some changes. And one of the things is reaching out to our community and um, almost anyone to try to recruit uh, mentors for our students so that when we have a student who has an interest, we can and they might um, need a lead to find an internship, we can have a list of people that we can maybe refer them to. So if you uh, have any interest in being a mentor or you know somebody who might want to be a mentor uh, or anybody in general, um, we are we, we'd like we'd like their name. We'd, we'd like your name or their name or any information that you could give us about um, possible mentors. Uh, and so mentoring is just what it is. It's 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 helping kids learn about the work world and uh, real world experiences through the things that they're interested in, um, which is why all of us are at our school. So uh, we do have a specific web page on our site dedicated to internships with some fabulous videos for from past students um, talking about their internships um, and also material for um, possible mentors uh, because we know that sometimes people are busy and if they're if you just if we just initially ask them about being a mentor um, there might be a little fear because they don't know a whole lot about it so on that web page there is lots of information for mentors uh, to give them uh, a general idea of what mentoring is uh, in our internship program. And then mine and Barb's uh, email and contact information is on that page also for um, people who need a little bit more uh, information. We can talk to them directly about that. So with all of that, um, I know I probably rambled on because I usually do. I will pass it on to Suzanne, who is the uh, instructional coach and technology leader. Yeah, and there uh, are Tony. Oh. If you see a couple notes in the chat, or maybe Bethany is gonna. Yep, that's why I just want to make sure if Tony could respond to those questions in the chat while Suzanne is talking. That would be great. I will. Perfect, perfect. Um, so, yeah, my name is um, Suzanne Reeve. My job um, involves a. It's a, this long acronym in Bellevue, but it involves helping teachers with curriculum and with instruction with their teaching, leading teacher training, but it also does have an aspect of uh, working with technology. And so I've had the chance to help some of your students with various um, technology issues that have come up. And um, I will just share a little bit tonight about um, that district provided laptop, about some common applications and information about um, parent monitoring of computer use outside school hours, if you'd like to know about that. So um, technology is something we obviously rely on a lot, but it can also be something that is um, um, frustrating at times. So um, definitely are aware of that. And um, if, as I go through this, um, if you have any sort of tech related questions that you've been wondering about, feel free to drop those in the chat. Um, I will try to answer what I can as we go through. Um, those that we can't answer here um, helps to kind of know what's circling around for you and, and what you need. So um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and um, just the basic students have a district provided laptop. If you're new to Bellevue and you haven't noticed that this can also turn into a tablet, um, it's flexible and can flip around and, and can be used as a tablet. Students should be charging it each night they should bring it to school every day. Um, if a student forgets their laptop, um, they'll typically just for the day kind of work on paper or work with another student, um, but they should bring it with them every day. We do have a tech office. It's in the counseling center um, in the, the main building, um, so students can come there for help. If students do lose a charger or a stylus, um, there is a fine that's associated with losing it. If it gets broken, they can come in and get it replaced if it's broken. Um, if it's lost though, we will. Um, there is a fine associated with this. So um, some of this information came out, um, a lot of this information came out to families generally, but just some things that we want to just 
um, reinforce or go over, make sure folks um, have heard. So um, quickly, just some things to note if your student is looking for any information, basically anything, um, there's this thing called the student portal. And that's a kind of one stop thing just to be aware of. They have a desktop. Students have a shortcut on their desktop and uh, you can also get to it at that bsd405.sharepoint.com. And as we go through, I'll just show you what's on there. This is actually a nice thing about this is it's accessible um, through the website, uh, that web bsd405.sharepoint.com. It's accessible from any computer, so um, doesn't matter if you're using a home computer, if the student is um, away from home or they don't have their laptop with them, this is an online resource. So you can just see, and um, as Bethany clicks through here, there'll be a couple of different pieces of the screen that get highlighted. Um, this part over here, I know it's kind of small to see, um, but they've got things like um, Teams is right there. So if they want to know launching Teams, their email online, um, their OneDrive, which is sort of a cloud location to back up all their files, Clever, which is how they get into a number of their files, or King County Library System. So anyway, lots of services and information here in the student portal, um, tech help, um, reporting safety concerns, all these things. So um, go ahead and Bethany, you can flip through some of those. Um, so the student portal, just to be aware of some of the key tech tools that we use, you might have become familiar with Teams, with OneNote. Something to highlight, parents and guardians can request read only links to OneNotes, and that would come from each individual teacher. So contact a teacher if you would uh, like that. Um, Office 365, um, so that students can collaborate. That's, that's sort of the analog to sort of Google Docs or um, Google Drive that we use here. And then Synergy, is um, the resource for checking grades, attendance um, information. If for you to log on, um, there should be a parent activation email that comes from Bellevue for parents to get onto Parent View. If you have not received that, or if you didn't see it, or you lost it or something, that email address at the bottom, parenthelp at bsd405.org, is the um, parent tech support um, email address for the district. So um, I see a note in the chat about um, teachers using Teams for assignments, and most of them are, I would say, at least many that I know um, are still posting assignments through Teams. That's been an encouragement to continue to do that. Um, so many teachers are continuing to do that. Uh, just yeah, just a couple, another a uh, couple of notes about Parent View. If you haven't logged in yet, uh, you can get to it from the district homepage if you're online. Um, there is a mobile app as well, but you just click that grades button from the VSD district website and it will take you to information about logging on. Um, there's a, some other resources about computing um, and tech in the district and um, we can click through these, but just so that you're aware, there's some um, things to be aware of, a responsible use of technology um, that students should have received through advisory class and um, that we emailed home to parents as well, um, and just some other resources here. If you have any questions um, to be available through the, the district website. One more thing just to um, make you aware is this program called App Parent, if you haven't seen that yet. This is a free mobile app um, that will allow you to monitor your child's screen on their school laptop. Um, outside of school hours, you can also remotely lock and unlock your child's device. You can look at their internet usage. So um, if you are interested in that, there was a BSD, uh, there was an email that went out to parents from the IT department. There was an invitation to app parent. Um, if you haven't received the email or want more information, again, that parent help at bsd405.org, that email address is the, the place to go. Um, so you can get the free mobile app, but you need the actual parent invitation in order to have an access code to sync it up with your child's laptop. So um, feel free to ask more questions about that through that parent help website web address. And uh, yeah, if, if other tech questions come up, um, send your child to tech help, ask um, either me or somebody in the building. Uh, we want folks to be able to have technology that works and that they can use for, for school work. Awesome. Thanks, Suzanne. I appreciate that. And if you can help with any of those questions that are in the chat, that would be fabulous. I have about a one 
minute video from our Bellevue Schools Foundation director. And then Martin and Karen are going to close us out with fabulous PTSA. And I'm going to hope my sound works. So Suzanne, if you don't hear the sound, let me know, OK? All right. the video loading for you, Bethany. We're not seeing it yet. I don't know if it's still. OK, looks like maybe we have a uh, spotty usage of the. The video and sound. So we will definitely send out that link if that didn't work for some folks who saw in the chat you weren't able to see the video. So we can send that out. Um, I just want to have a huge shout out to PTSA and all the support for the last 10 years. Um, aside from wonderful staff appreciation events and the grant funding that's really contributed a lot uh, to making our programs much more robust. It's just awesome to have partners with our families um, in the work that we do and, and to supporting um, our wonderful children. Um, so thank you to all who are members of our PTSA and who've contributed over the years, whether it's in a leadership capacity or not. Um, your participation matters um, and we value it immensely. So Martin and Karen, I am going to turn it over to you to close us out tonight. Tell us what's going on in the world of PTSA. Hello, my friends. This is probably the way that you guys all know who I am, because all you can see is my white glasses and my mask. So here, finally, you can see my face. So thank you all for being a part of tonight. I know it's been a long night. Everyone's probably got dinner plans and things that they have to do. So uh, Bethany, let's just go fast through this. So quick introductions. So my name is Martin Pierce. I am the co-president. I was last year, for those of you who are involved. Um, my lovely, lovely new co-president is Karen Hargrove. She's amazing. Um, and then we also have Renjana and Nitya as our co-presidents and Todd, who was our co-treasurer uh, co last year. And Hope, who was my co-president last year, has also decided to be co-treasurer this year, and Hermina, our secretary. So what we do, just so you know, because it seems like you just give money and it goes into some bucket that you have no idea where the bucket is. So what we do is we provide grants. Grants is probably the most important thing that we provide for the school. Um, we. I keep hearing something, but that's fine. Um, 
we provide grants, as you may or may not know, uh, to help basically back support the stuff that the school district doesn't have the money for. And as we know, with the pandemic, we don't have extra money. We actually have less money. So we help to provide uh, opportunities. So last year we did things with uh, virtual learning, even in virtual learning, to help our uh, Spanish teachers uh, find creative ways to interact with their students and help them learn. Um, we provided outdoor activities for our PE and health department so that they could find socially or physically distanced um, opportunities for kids to interact with one another. Um, and then we also provided opportunities for uh, social and emotional learning relative to uh, dealing with the various uh, social and emotional issues that we are as a country dealing with. And so we had some uh, professional development for the staff, as well as supporting uh, SOAR, one of our clubs for middle school slash high school. We also do student and staff appreciation stuff to appreciate all the things that all of our fabulous big picture folks do. We have in the past pre-pandemic funded activities like field trips and going to the various places um, that our students get to have their education enhanced, um, including moving up ceremony, which is not related to that, but also in Blaze and LTI, which Tony talked about earlier, a software program that we've helped to fund. And last but not least, we're trying to always figure out ways to create community because if there's nothing else, we have community within the big picture school. So we try to find ways to do that. And uh, we've done that last year relative to virtual cookbooks and social opportunities and spirit wear. Here are some of the examples over the many years. We don't need to spend a lot of time on this, but your dollars actually impact these kids. There are videos. Actually, there is a video that you should all watch. Um, so we have a new website, www.bellevuebpsptsa.org. It's a horrible, horrible way to have a website, but it's Bellevue Big Picture School PTSA.org. It's been updated as of the last 24 hours. Um, there's a fabulous amount of information on there in terms of what we've done, what we're gonna continue to do and how much we need your support ultimately, whether it's time, money or otherwise. I'm gonna hand it off to Karen. Um, got it. Um, <laughs> hello everyone, I'm Karen Hargrove. I am here to uh, ask you to donate. We've started our um, fall fundraising drive. We are hoping to raise oh thirty-five thousand. I'm gonna go look at the numbers by October fifteenth, and we have some very exciting news that we're going to announce tonight. An anonymous donor has offered. Um, to donate club level tickets for the November 1st game of the playoff bound Sounders versus the rivals, their rivals, the LA Galaxy. So if anyone donates by October 15th and donations that have already happened this year, thank you, thank you. Um, those count towards this and we will pick one lucky winner um, in a random drawing to get these four Seats valued at about $600. So donate your money. <laughs> and the more the more we can get donated up front, if we can reach our goal by October 15th, we don't have to ask you for money for the rest of the year. And we can put all that money towards wonderful stuff for our students. And I need to make a point that any donated amount will get you into the raffle. Anything you donate, if it's little or big. And I'll just add on that there are other ways that you can also donate, like after you've donated, whether it's $10 or 
or $100. Um, there are matches that your company may or may not uh, provide. That's always helpful. There's also um, Amazon. So I, you know, I know myself, I shop on Amazon 24 seven. Um, if you desire, uh, decide to sign up for smile, smile.amazon.com and then pick big picture Bellevue school as your recipient, a percentage of your uh, purchase goes towards uh, money that goes towards the school. Is that it? That would be it. It does really take a village, my friends. Awesome. Well, thank you, Martin and Karen. I appreciate your leadership um, and your partnership in all that we do here at Big Picture and the wonderful village that we have. And we get to be an in-person village uh, once again. So thank you all for your time tonight. Um, the wonderful and hilarious um, and informative Flipgrid videos, they're linked on our website. Um, they're also in the emails that I've been sending out um, today. So feel free to look at those tonight. Um, do one or two tonight, view the other five teachers um, another time. They'll be up on our website for quite a while. Uh, they're grouped by subject area, so you can find your science teacher or your advisory teacher or math teacher um, in those areas. And if you're not sure who your children's teachers are yet, um, your kiddos can help you. Uh, the class schedules with teachers' names are in parent view. And if you need any additional assistance, reach out and we'd be happy to help you. Um, Tony has dropped in the Flipgrid link in the chat so you can get there directly. Thank you, Suzanne, for putting that in there as well. Um, you can log in directly there from here. Um, and if we didn't get to all of the questions in the chat, we'll be sure to follow up um, and have those answered for you. And if you have additional ones, you know the point people to reach out to. Um, if it's Tony for our internships or the student's high school advisor, Suzanne, um, for some of these instructional technology needs counselors or PTSA. We're here for all of you. We value you. We can't wait to see you all in person together um, as soon as we possibly can. Matt, any closing words? No, I'm hoping Martin will close us out with a song. Oh, Martin, you got the playlist ready to kick oh, us stand out for the by. Oh my God, stand by. <laughs> Pressure. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Thanks everyone so much. Take care. Appreciate you guys as a community.